So I recently had a very kind gentleman email me inquiring about the subject of Flat Earth, and he asked me this. Marty, let me first start off by saying that I love your work. I recently watched your Flat Earth English Gematria and the New World Order video, and though I agree with much of the content, some of the Flat Earth stuff has me concerned. Again, let me state I have much respect for you. Sir, to hear you espouse Flat Earth support has me confused. It has been apparent from the start to me that this is a psyops toward the conspiracy, critical thinking community. I'm super curious to ask what was the tipping point for you. I was hoping for a quick follow-up video on the info that has convinced Marty Leeds. And then this nice gentleman links this video entitled Flat Earth Debunked and encourages me to check it out. And then he goes on to say, This certainly is not a threat to stop viewing your content if you keep on the Flat Earth thing. I'm sure you could care less. It seems you're interested in ultimate truth, and that's why I'm sure that it's me that's missing something. Have a great weekend, man. What a nice email, huh? Respectful, non-confrontational, eager to ask questions? Too bad the rest of the comment sections and interactions on social media couldn't be so cordial. So I recently watched a few videos, one titled Measuring the Earth's Radius with a Telescope by YouTuber Cody's Lab, who has a whopping 1 million plus subscribers, go Cody, and a response video by ODDTV, who is a flat earther who is creeping along at his measly 71,000 subscribers. Come on, ODD, get your shit together. I'll leave a link below so you can watch both of their videos and subscribe to their channels. Now, measuring the rotundity of the Earth seems like it would be a pretty basic scientific experiment, an open and shut case, really, especially in our modern day Google Earth, GPS, technologically advanced space age world, but apparently a bunch of nutty ass people online seem to think otherwise. It's a pretty simple question. What's the shape of the thing that we're standing on? In the heliocentric model, we are told that the Earth is an oblate spheroid, or an irregular geoid, roughly 25,000 miles at its circumference. The Earth is rotating at roughly 1k an hour at its equator and is circling around the Sun at a distance of about 93 million miles away. And all of these things are considered absolute facts by modern science. The curvature formula for the Earth is as follows. So, for instance, your curvature drop in one mile will be 8 inches, but if you take it out to 9 miles, it would be 9 squared, or 9 times 9 equals 81, and then you would take that 81 times the 8 inches, making the curvature drop equal to about 648 inches, or roughly 54 feet at 9 miles. Now, of course, there are other factors to consider when calculating curvature. This is not the only thing, including line of sight and the horizon line, elevation differences, the topography of the geography and the area that you're measuring. All of these things need to be taken into consideration. I completely understand this. But in general, this formula, to the best of my knowledge, is correct. So I will let Cody set up his experiment for you. So I'm currently on the beach of the Great Salt Lake at Promontory Point, Utah. This here is a peninsula that extends out into the lake, but it's also one of the longest straight shots on a level surface, you know, the surface of the lake, to a major landmark. You see, over there is the Kennecott Smokestack, about 35 miles away. It is the tallest man-made structure west of the Mississippi River, and is almost as tall as the Empire State Building. So given that I know how tall the smokestack is, how high it is above the surface of the lake, and I know how far away it is, about 35 miles, I should be able to, by looking at it, estimate what the curvature of the Earth is. And if the Earth is not round and is actually flat, like some people seem to believe, then we should easily be able to see the Saltaire building and the highway that runs along the lake. The Saltaire building, of course, is very recognizable as well. So I've got a camera hooked up to the telescope so you can see through it. And there's the smokestack right there. You can see a bit of its reflection. It's interesting. But yeah, look at that. You can see the mountains in the background. There we go. We can see it. But one thing we definitely cannot see is the highway, which should be visible from here. And also the, uh, the buildings, the smelter buildings, which should be right over there in the middle of the screen. They are not visible either. And uh, Saltaire should be over here. Should be right about there, but is below the horizon and we cannot see it. So there you go. The Earth is round and it is hiding things behind its curvature. 
So I just want to stop here a second and take note that Cody is noting the reflection or mirage or mirroring that we see just above what we would call like a level line or, or a, a baseline, if you will. And so we can see, as he's pointing out very clearly, that there's a mirage there and that mirage is sort of obscuring everything that's below it. So from all this, Cody basically took how big the smokestack was, how far away it was, how much, of, uh, how much of it should be visible according to the sphericity of the earth, calculated the miles and drop and curvature, and voila, basically seems to work out pretty well. The mirage in this video plays a big part in trying to determine our horizon line. A mirage is a case of uh, atmospheric refraction, and it's caused by the fact that uh, you have temperature variations in the atmosphere, and these cause uh, density variations. What's happening is the light from Chicago is being bent by the cold air above Lake Michigan slightly downwards towards the, the observer here in, in Michigan, and that's, cause, and that's helping the light rays uh, get around the curvature of the Earth, so to speak, so that, so that uh, Chicago can be uh, seen almost all, all the way down to ground level. But if it is a mirage, argues many of the biggest critics who've emailed me, the image should be upside down. The word mirage originates from the same uh, root word as the word mirror. So technically, I think if you're going to be a stickler about it, you would say a mirage has to have an inverted image. But again, the, the physics is all the same. So YouTuber ODDTV in his response video contested that the one thing that CoDD as we'll call him. One thing that Cody didn't take into consideration in his measurements was atmospheric lensing or magnification. Here's a new segment that ODD included in his video discussing the science behind this whole phenomenon. The science is the same of that of a lens. Here's a simple example. So if you're looking at, at uh, Chicago here, just maybe now you can just see the top of, mm -hmm. uh, of the Sears Tower and if our simulated uh, temperature inversion moves into place, hopefully now you can see all of Pretty much all of yeah, Chicago, see all the lower buildings, including including what's at ground level. So the atmosphere really is like acting like a lens. Yeah. So that clip is actually from another flat earther, uh, Rob Skiba. And what ODD TV and Rob Skiba contest is that atmospheric lensing is partially causing the bottom of the buildings to be cut off, and thus the mirage and the atmospheric magnification or lensing are obscuring the bottom of the buildings. And that's what they're claiming. And Cody D, or Cody is saying that no, that mirage is actually showing the top of the horizon line. And therefore that what we're seeing in that mirage is actually the curvature of the earth that's obscuring the buildings. And let's put in the horizon line. So you can see these two replicated goies here. Let's uh, go right between those. And there's a little spot over there that looks like it's replicated. So right along there is the actual horizon. Everything below that line is a reflection. So one person saying it's atmospheric lensing and mirage, and the other person saying it's curvature. So if we presuppose nothing about the shape of the Earth, whether it's concave or convex or flat or whatever, and we take all of this into consideration, what we would have on our hands is some pretty good questions for a true scientific investigation. So what are some of those questions? So due to the amount of atmospheric lensing, are things closer than they appear? Can we say determine the amount of lensing from measuring the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere or the temperature of the day and other variables and such? Is the mirage covering up anything here? I mean, you're looking at over 30 miles of mirage. So how much mirage are we actually seeing? Is the mirage simply covering up the bottom of the buildings? Is that what's going on? Is it the street and the buildings behind all of that mirage? Or is this the curvature of the earth that we're seeing? Here's a good question. How high does one have to ascend in height in order to actually see curvature? Like there's got to be a mathematical formula for that. I mean, this is a good question. So if one's line of sight maintains focus at the horizon at all times and we ascend and climb straight up higher and higher and higher how many miles up is it before we start seeing the actual curvature of the earth and into deep space if you will i mean this should be from my understanding a mathematical constant probably an exponentiating mathematical constant at that 
And yet again, if the Earth is spherical, and help me understand this, shouldn't there be yet another general mathematical constant as to how far away the horizon will be? So if you're standing at sea level for, say, a six-foot-tall person, th that's not me, um, six-foot-tall person standing at the sea level, should the horizon not be, generally speaking, a set distance away? Shouldn't if, you're, if your line of sight is on the horizon at the whole time and the Earth is curved, that horizon line should be, in general, generally speaking, a set distance away. That should be a mathematical constant. That, that seems very reasonable to me. So ODD goes on to show two videos in his open letter response to Cody. The first one is from YouTuber Jenna Freda, and it's an incredible video of Jenna zooming her camera across a lake at a distance of over 30 miles. And as you can clearly see right here, you can see almost the entirety of the city with just a bit of the street obscured from view. And then she shows a shot at the end of the video of the city skyline and then a screenshot from her video. And they look pretty damn close. It's almost identical. And then ODD shows another video of an independent balloon launch using a camera with no fisheye lens, so there's no distortion in the lens. And this balloon reaches elevations of over 121,000 feet, which is nearly 23 miles. And as we can clearly see, not an ounce of curvature is to be found. Now, I've heard the argument quite a lot that, well, you just can't get high enough to see the curvature of the Earth. Well, look, folks, I've been plenty high in my time. Climbed many a rocky peak, been at high elevations, and I've yet to see one ounce of curvature. How are we supposed to reconcile being able to measure curvature over a distance of 30 miles while standing on the ground, as Cody claims to do in his video, but yet when we climb nearly 23 miles high, we find a flat, level plane? We see neither curvature left to right, nor descending away from us. We see none at all. You know, it would be really great to get responses about this singular question of curvature that doesn't rely on ad hominem attacks or misdirections or calling people stupid or anything of the like. I would just love to focus on this one question. Can we measure curvature? Seems pretty simple. I don't want to hear about globe heads and flat tards. I don't want to hear about how dropping a mic on TV somehow proves gravity or how the southern star rotations don't work on a flat earth model, bro. I don't want to hear about how the sun can't possibly be 93 million miles away or dude, the lunar eclipses don't work on a flat earth, idiot. I don't want to hear about how there are no satellites or how Google Earth proves the sphere or how Google Earth proves the flat earth. I don't want to hear about how water always maintains its level or what about the Coriolis effect or how Eric Dubé is a secret agent working for the CIA infiltrating the truth community or how Aristothenes proved this shit a few thousand years ago, dude. I don't want to talk about any of that. I want to focus on one question. Does the earth below our feet have the curvature that we're told it has? Because if it doesn't, then the entirety of the science attributed to it falls flat, if you will. It'd be nice to hear from a few folks on this issue. Like, for instance, Graham Hancock. Graham was kind enough to feature me on his website. Uh, Graham's done fantastic work throughout his entire life, dedicating much of his life to uncovering the possibility of ancient advanced civilizations, and it's no secret that many of these cultures clearly believe the Earth to be a flat plane. Has he seriously looked into flat Earth at all? Rogue scholar Randall Carlson would be great to hear from. I had Randall on my podcast, and the guy is freaking brilliant. I mean, he's so articulate, shines in so many different areas. Randall's site is called Sacred Geometry International, and geometry literally means Earth measure. So maybe he could provide some insights. I know he's a fan of NASA and whatnot, but I mean, has he seriously questioned their claims? I know Sargon of Akkad has already thrown out some rich ad hominems toward flat earthers. Hello everyone, welcome to This Week in Stupid for the 9th of April 2017. I have a question. How does Rachel Dolezal keep getting on the news? Why is this even being countenanced? There is nothing about what she is saying here that is scientifically accurate. So why even listen to her? What are they going to do? Start hosting flat earthers? Mr. Stefan Malinux, everybody butchers that guy's name. Stefan Molyneux's Free Domain Radio is the largest, most philosophical conversation on the internet. Could we maybe get a thought or two from him? I know he had discussed this topic with a caller once, but has Stefan ever really given it a serious consideration? What about Viceland? You guys sent a joint into space because, you know, science and stuff. 
Maybe you could focus some of that gargantuan budget of yours on other things besides such hard-hitting articles as this one and put your focus on this question. The Corbett Report. I love that guy. For years, that guy has presented just great material. He's always got that ball spinning behind him in the background there. Does he have a word by chance? Maybe Dr. Brian Cox could solve this riddle for us because, you know, I told you so just doesn't cut it. From here, the Earth certainly looks flat. Now, everybody knows that it's round. But how do you know? You know because someone told you. Or maybe Cara Santa Maria could talk nerdy about this question. Those guys over at Mythbusters, maybe. Anyone? Anyone? You know, just like that nice gentleman that emailed me, there are a lot of sincere, earnest, inquisitive, critically thinking people asking serious questions about what we're told about our earthly home. And in my opinion, these people could use some help. And guess what? I'm one of them. As someone who discusses very elementary mathematics on my channel, I'd love to see some responses on this. It's just one honest question. We have been given specific measurements for the size of the earth and are told that the science behind heliocentrism is so sound that we are able to launch satellites 6 billion miles away to the outer edges of our solar system with this mathematics. If this mathematics is so sound for all of that, then determining the visible sphericity of the earth should not be that difficult. These mathematics should not be that elusive. I don't think it's an unreasonable question and challenge for the community. I've been asked, Marty Leeds, are you a flat earther? And my response is, no, I'm not a flat earther. What am I? I'm a man who utilizes the scientific method. And as someone who's brought his own discerning mind and critically thinking mind to this issue, I can't help but come to the conclusion that the earth I'm standing on is not what we've been told. As someone who believes in the principles and methodologies of science, I'm having a very, very difficult time reconciling this and this with this and this. Look, all sorts of people believe in all sorts of crazy shit like UFOs and interdimensional reptilians, God or no God, Xenu, the dictator of the Galactic Confederacy, whatever the hell this guy believes in, and some people even believe there's a rover on Mars. To each his own, I say. I still have friends that believe we're on a ball and hey, they cool with me. This isn't a conversation about ideologies or belief systems. This is a conversation about science. And I would hope that asking the community at large for our best minds to be put towards one simple question like, can we measure curvature, isn't so outlandish as to deserve unruly attacks and slander. I would hope that we, as a humanity, are collectively better than that. I would hope that we can have an adult, cordial, kind-hearted, and purely scientific conversation about these things. Oh, but don't worry, I don't honestly believe that's going to happen anytime soon. I've been on the internet long enough. I might be stupid enough to believe that the earth is flat, but I'm not that stupid. I'm sure that after this video goes out, there's going to be some response video entitled Marty Leeds is a total flat fag discussing how my mother eats cock and how I'm too dumb to understand gravity. Can't wait. Why would anybody lie about the shape of the earth? Well, the sentiment shared by many in the flat earth community is essentially this. If you can be lied to about the very place you call home, then you can be lied to about pretty much everything else. Oh, and why does the shape of the earth matter? Well, I'll, I'll tell you why it matters to me. Simple. Because the truth is sacred. Be kind to one another out there. Be good to one another out there. Chances are the person that you're arguing with online is not your mortal enemy. There are real enemies out there in the world, and the disagreement or debate that you're having with somebody online pales in comparison to the true evil that goes on in this world. Just remember that. Just remember that before you dislike this or you leave some shitty comment below. Okay? All right. As always, thanks for watching. Many blessings and much love to all.